Here we have a couple of problems involving one-dimensional kinematics. Okay, the first question asks, uh, an unwary football player collides with a padded goalpost while running at a velocity of 7.5 meters per second and comes to a full stop after compressing the padding and his body 0.35 meters. How long does the collision last? Okay, so let's draw a little picture just to get an idea of what's going on. So here is our football player. You can tell that he's running because his knees are bent and maybe he's holding a football. All right, and he has some initial velocity and he's heading toward a goal post. Beautiful. Okay, so he's yeah, setting towards some goalpost and um, with some initial velocity, 7.5 meters per second, and he's going to stop. Right, final velocity of zero meters per second, and uh, we're told to find the time it takes to do this. Find delta t. All right, so let's write down the things we know the known values. So again we know the initial velocity is uh, 7.50 meters per second. We know the final velocity is 0 meters per second. We know that the uh, his, his padding and uh, or the, the padding on the goalpost and his body compress by some amount. All right, so we must just be talking about the time when he's in contact with the goalpost. All right, so that's a delta x. Delta x is 0 0.350 meters. Um, and we're going to have to assume here that the acceleration is a constant. All right, otherwise we can't use our equations. So um, the acceleration here is a constant, but it's unknown. We don't know it. So it looks like first we need to find the acceleration, right? Because all of our kinematic equations involve acceleration. We need to know that first, right? In fact, in this case, it's a deceleration, right? And deceleration simply means that the acceleration vector and the velocity vectors point in opposite directions, right? So that the acceleration acts to slow the object down. Okay, and this is important because uh, it looks like we should be looking for a negative acceleration. If we call to the right uh, positive x, the acceleration should be to the left. Uh, and we'll see that. So uh, we want to know a. We know v final, v initial, and delta x. So it looks like we can use the third equation I've listed. Uh, v final squared equals v initial squared plus 2a delta x. Alright, so plugging in, we have 0 meters per second squared equals uh, 7.5 meters per second squared plus 2 times a times 0 0.350 meters. If you solve that for a, for acceleration, you get um, minus 80.4 meters per second squared. Now we can put that together with uh, what we already know to find delta t. Looks like uh, looks like we could say v final equals v initial plus a delta t. V final is still 0 meters per second. V initial is 7.5 meters per second uh, plus a negative 80.4 meters per second squared times delta t. And if you solve this, this gives a delta t of 0 0.093 seconds. 
Okay, so we can ask ourselves, is that reasonable? Well, that seems pretty reasonable. He's not going to be slowing down very long, right? He'll be in contact with the uh, with the goalpost longer than that, but um, this is how long it takes him to stop. Right? We'll see this sort of thing again uh, when we talk about impulse related to forces. Okay. So we can look at problem number two. Problem number two. Problem number two says, um, calculate the height of a cliff if it takes 2.35 seconds for a rock to hit the ground when it is thrown straight up from the cliff with an initial velocity of 8 meters per second. All right, so we'll start with that. So we'll uh, draw a picture initially. It's always a good idea to draw a picture. Here's our cliff. Here's our initial velocity, v initial, and uh, we're told that it's thrown straight up, uh, but I can't draw the, the lines on top of each other, so I'll give it a little bit of um, width here. And we're looking for this height. All right, so let's say that. Let's say find h. <clears throat> so let's write down what we know. We know that V initial is uh, 8 meters per second. All right, we chose a positive here, which means that we've chosen up to be our positive Y direction. All right, that's reasonable. Um, we could write down V final. Uh, it's tempting, and I've mentioned this before, it's tempting to say V final is zero, because indeed, once it hits the floor of this, uh, uh, over the cliff, uh, it will stop, right? But uh, just before it hits the floor, it'll be going down really fast. Uh, so our equations uh, account for the going down really fast. It does not account for uh, the collision with the, the floor of this uh, uh, edge of the cliff or off of the cliff. So we don't know what v-final is, all right? We do know uh, the acceleration, though. Acceleration is uh, minus g, so that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Um, we are given a delta t of 2.35 seconds. We also know that y-final is maybe 0 meters and y-initial is uh, h. Right? This is what we're solving for. So any equation that has y initial in it, uh, that's the h that we're looking for. So it looks like we could use um, y final equals y initial plus v initial delta t plus one half a delta t squared. So we can plug in some values here. Y final is 0 meters. Y initial is h. That's what we're solving for. V initial is 8 meters per second. Delta t is 2.35 seconds. We have a negative 9.8 over 2 times a uh, delta t squared, which is 2.35 seconds squared. Alright, if you solve that for h, you come up with 8.26 meters. So part b asks, um, how long would it take to reach the ground if it were thrown straight down? So we can modify our picture here. So here's our cliff again. It's the same height that we just solved, only V initial now points it down. So now we're asked to find a new 
delta t. Okay, so um, clearly we're looking for a time that's smaller than the time we were given initially. All right, so let's write down the things we know. We know um, v initial. It's 8 meters per second, but it's down, so it's now minus 8 meters per second. Uh, we still do not know v final, so I'm not going to write it here. We do know acceleration, it's still 9.8 meters per second squared and it's down as well so it's negative. Um, we now know the height so y initial is this 8.26 meters and y final is 0 meters. Okay so we can put these together and find this new delta t. Um, again we don't know v final so um, we're going to ignore two of the equations. They have, both have a v final in them. Um, but it looks like we could use the, the other equation, the one that does not have v final in it. All right, so if we fill that out, we've got uh, y final equals y initial plus v initial delta t plus 1 half a delta t squared. We can put uh, numbers in for this. That's uh, 0 meters equals 8.26 meters minus 8 meters per second times a delta t minus 9.8 over 2 times a delta t squared. And this is a quadratic equation, right, or a quadratic function. We can use a, um, an equation to solve for delta t. Okay, I'm not going to do that here. If you need reference for that, um, let me know. Uh, but we can solve for delta t. We're going to get two answers. Okay, the two answers we get are minus 2.35 seconds or 0 0.717 seconds. All right, and in math, that's totally valid. We have these two answers, and that's great. In physics, we're going to discount one of these um, based on what's actually happening. All right. Uh, we expect that when we throw this um, this rock off this cliff, it's going to hit the ground later and not before we throw the rock. Right? So the negative time, that's not physical. That's not the answer. So it must be that our answer is um, 0.717 seconds. All right? And that seems reasonable. That's shorter than the 2.35 seconds we had for the original uh, situation. So this seems to be correct.